Thank you, Regina. Good evening, all, and welcome to the Board of Adjustment Township of Berkeley Heights. This is our regular meeting this evening. It's a public meeting. It's May 23rd, 2024. We have 7 p.m. on the clock. We're located here at 29 Park Avenue in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Regarding the Sunshine Law, please note that this meeting is being held in conformance with all regulations of the Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice has been published on the Township website and sent to the newspapers of record. The agenda has been posted on the town website and the website bulletin board in Municipal Town Hall at least 48 hours in advance of tonight's meeting. The agenda items will not necessarily be heard in the order listed and the meeting will not continue substantially past 10.30 p.m. Regina, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Sullivan. Present. Mr. Cobiello. Here. Mr. D'Elia. Here. Mr. Ringwood. Here. Mr. Sylvester. Uh, send his regrets this evening. Mr. Pareda. Here. Ms. West Augustine. Here. Mr. Deegan. Here. Mr. Chisaurus. Send his regrets this evening. Thank you very much. Ms. And Ms. Wolf. Here. And the adoption of the minutes, Mr. Delia, did you have an opportunity to review the minutes from the April 18th session? And can you make a motion, please? I did leave, and I believe everything's in order and make a motion to accept. I may have a second by Mr. Deegan. I second that motion. All in favor on the minutes from April 18th who are eligible? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm not saying that's a motion. Yes. The adoption of resolutions, application 240004. This is the Kohler residence located at 7 Deep Dell Drive, block 3001, lot 27. Mr. Coviello, do you have an opportunity to review the resolution? I read the uh, resolution. I found the read to be in order, and I'll make a motion to accept. And the when you read through the resolution, you confirmed that the... Uh, Setbacks as discussed were appropriate, correct? Correct. Thank you. May I have a second by Mr. Delia? I'll second. And a roll call on application 0004. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sobiano? Yes. Mr. Delia? Yes. Mr. Ferreira? Yes. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you very much. Application 240006. This is the Roundtree family at 52 Hampton Drive. Block 3204, lot 11. This was a generator relocation, a rear yard reorientation of a deck slash patio, and I believe a front portico. Mr. Delia, did you have an opportunity to review the resolution? I did. Everything looked in order. Make a motion to accept. And may I have a second by Mr. Pareda, please? I second the motion. And a roll call on 0006. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Coviello? Yes. Mr. D'Elia? Yes. Mr. Pereira? Yes. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Motion carried 5 0. Thank you. Application 240005. This is the May residence located at 230 Princeton Avenue, block 1709, lot 5. This was a large expansion which included a rear yard addition, a relocation of a generator, an addition of a garage on a home that did not. Have a garage that existed, Mr. Delia. Did you have an opportunity to review the resolution? I did, and everything looked in order. I make a motion to accept. Thank you. I may have a second by Mr. Deegan, please. I second that motion. And a roll call on 0005. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Coviello? Yes. Mr. Delia? Yes. Mr. Pareda? Yes. Deegan? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you very much. And we are moving into the applications for review this evening. We have three applications. They will be heard in the following order for the benefit of time management. Kent Drive will be first. We expect that application to be about 20 minutes. Application uh, 51 Tanglewood will be second. We expect that to be about 25 minutes. And application 18, we expect that to be about 30 minutes. Those, that's the order this evening. With that said, we'd like to hear from 115 Kent Drive, application 24007. Please watch the board on the microphone. And this is the Elbert Re Ebert residence located at 115 Kent Drive, block 2601, lot 2.01. This is a subdivision property off of Kent Drive, off of Mountain, on the west side of town in the R20 zone. 
And for the record, Mr. Chair, I did review the notice that was sufficient as to form and content. So the board does have jurisdiction to hear this case. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan, Sullivan and members of the board. My name is Priscilla Triolo. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Bittiger Elias Triolo and Deal, and we represent the property owners, Christiane and Nicholas Eber. Due to a family matter, my clients could not be here this evening and are relying on the representation of this office and their engineer and planner. Um, they will be watching it, but they um, had to attend to a family situation. And so they wanted me to extend apologies to the board for their absence, but they will be somewhere electronically. And Ms. Wolf, for the record, that is an acceptable. Yes, as long as she is representing them, that is perfectly fine. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is an application, um, as your summary says, for relief from the uh, permitted other coverage and the total lot coverage to allow the family to put in a pool, spa, and patio in their rear yard. We have one professional witness this evening. Kirsten Osterkorn is an engineer and a planner. She is the one who prepared the plans that traveled with the application. I've already submitted to you a letter of explanation with regard to um, how this application came to be. And with that, I'd ask you to swear in Ms. Osterkorn and have her testify to the conditions of the property, her plans, and why this is a good thing for the community. Thank you very Thank you. much. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got? I do. And if you could just qualify yourself as you're seeking to be admitted as both a planner and an engineer? Yes. Okay, perfect. Can you just qualify yourself? Sure. Uh, Kirsten Osterkorn from Omelin and Osterkorn, uh, 22 Madison Heights, Wyckoff, New Jersey. Um, I received my bachelor's in engineering from Rutgers University. I have my license since 2011. It's been in good standing. Um, I have been in front of Mainly the boards I do are in Bergen, Morris, and Essex County, but I have been down in this area in uh, Fanwood. Um, I end up going to Bridgewater also. Um, I do cover the area, so I'm familiar with the town, the zoning, the, the codes here. Um, I have my license in planning since 2015, uh, still in good standing as well. Again, I have been in front of some other neighboring communities. I have not had the pleasure of being in front of your board yet. We accept Ms. Estacorn's testimony. Where should I put the camera? Um, do you want me what? to? Why don't we put it? I don't know where the, if it has to be. I just, screen. you know what, what? Put it on that angle. I just want to make sure that the anyone who's interested in the audience has an opportunity to see the visual as well as the, the zoning for it. Does the microphone speak for the microphone? But we're just, Regina's going to make sure that we pick up all the the words. We did improve the system recently, and I think it is uh, accepting of people in motion, but please, thank you. The protocol for the board, this is the plan that was submitted with the application. Shall we mark it, or do you consider it as part of the application? Part of the application, thanks. All right. Ms. Osterkorn, did you prepare the, the full grading plan for 115 Kent Drive? Yes. Can you please explain to the board what it depicts and review the variance requested for the for this application? Sure. Now, if I stand here, is it picked up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can... Good. All right. Um, as explained, 115 Kent Drive, Berkeley Heights, zero block 2601, lot, uh, lot 2.01. On the left side of our sheet that was submitted is um the boundary and topographic survey it was a partial topographic survey just on the rear yard for the purposes of the pool um for those that are familiar with Kent Drive or have driven the area the the front yard does slope significantly up towards the house they have a long driveway in order to get to it the, the, the way the house was built and designed by another engineer as it's set higher similar to other houses that are in the neighborhood um, in the backyard, they have a patio that's flat and then a, a stepped up level to a nice yard um, that's fairly flat. There is some sloping from the south to the north, so the right to the left side of the page, but generally in the backyard, it, it is a nice area. On the 
south side of the property, there is a stone wall that meanders along the property line, technically on the neighbor's property uh, to the south. They have fencing around on the north side of the property. They do have trees. They have an evergreen tree shrub row that is planted along this whole property. As you can see in the survey, there is a gap from the post and rail fence to their property line, and that also is due to the topographic conditions. So overall, the property from the rear slopes to the south to the north, but in the front yard, everything does slope down to Ken Drive. Um, they have uh, the grass area. The one thing that was not depicted in the survey, which we looked at later post the Environmental Commission's report, is um, we spoke with the homeowners and did some investigation into their roof leader system, and as well as their previous plans that were done for the house when it was constructed. There are seepage pits in the front yard that collect the roof system. Uh, so that is part of a, an existing drainage system that does occur. Uh, the other thing to point out under existing conditions, which will also all tie into my testimony with respect to also the Environmental Commission's report is the driveway. I do have some pictures I'd like to give in. That's okay. What do they get marked somewhere? Are they yeah. multiple copies? Or it's, it... it's one, there's four pictures on one paper. Okay, can we mark so we'll that? We'll mark that as one? A1 and we'll distribute the photos. For the record, who took so the photographs? There are four pictures on one sheet. I took the photos. When did you take them approximately? Uh, two weeks ago. And are they an accurate depiction of the property as it currently exists? Yes. It's mainly just the front yard. It's the same picture. Yeah, it's just, there's four pictures on one page. You're trying to simplify it. So it's just one for everybody. Thank you. Out. So the purpose of these photos is to show for those that haven't been to the site is the existing front yard conditions. As you can see from the driveway of how, the, how it slopes, while we don't have topography there, and I was out there, I can I also can see there's a slight crown to the driveway. There's a stone row on both sides of it. And I know it was noted in the environmental report of potentially trying to collect the driveway or introduce some other sort of rain gardens or other circumstances. This plan, the way it was designed and built whenever the house was built some years ago was built per plan. And they have a stone row on both sides that the water does get to and then it comes down to the street. And you can also see in the picture, the grass front yard, there's another stone area too. So I do believe from the coverage side of what's in the front yard, it is being managed and contained to the best that was originally proposed and designed for that front yard system. Going to our proposed conditions in our backyard, which is the second part of my sheet on the right side, we are proposing a pool and a patio in the rear yard. Um, we are over on coverages under existing conditions. The other coverage is allowed 10% and under existing conditions, we're at 15.62%. So we're already over it under existing. And the main part of that is because of the driveway. The driveway itself takes up 96% of that coverage. And I believe the way the house was designed while I was not the engineer doing it, it all had to do with the topographic conditions of the property to get the house up, create some level space in the backyard, and the front yard continues to slope down, and that's why they have their driveway the way that they do. Understanding the zoning ordinance, building coverage is allowed to be 15%. The house is only at 8.18%, but they are over on the other. And then with that right now, under the total coverage of 25%, existing, they're at 23.8%. So they're slightly under, but it doesn't allow for a lot of more improvements into that backyard, again, mainly because the driveway is as long as it is. With that, we proposed the backyard as we did. They wanted the spa. We had considered the spa in the pool. We wanted the spa separate so they can close the pool and still use the spa in some of the, in like more September, October. And the patio around provides enough room to be putting a table and chairs. I don't believe it to be an excessive amount of coverage in the back. But under the zoning table, it does appear to be, and we're asking for these variances. Under the other coverage for proposed, we're proposing 22.33%. And under impervious, we're at 30.51.
So we're asking for these variances compared to what is allowed. Um, as part of that, when we can speak to the, the benefits, detriments category, I did outline part of their hardship is due to how their lot is configured from their topography, how it's set back. They have this long driveway, which basically takes up all their coverage. But adding the additional coverage in the back, we are proposing three storm tech chambers to collect all the storm water that's from anything new that's impervious. So currently the house is being collected into a system in the front yard. The driveway is being maintained through the stone rows that are existing down the side of the driveway. And what we're proposing in the back is being handled by stormwater. So ultimately I do think we're able to be saying we're not gonna have any negative impact to the neighbors. It would be the property that's downhill of us is to the north, but with handling that stormwater system and bringing everything into the ground and below, we're not letting water just run off to them. Um, they do have intentions of also planting while after this is built, they want to introduce a tree row on the south side. Um, so they're not looking at the fence and the wall that's for their neighbor's property. And ultimately the tree that they do have planted was done intentionally on the north side of their driveway. They were maturing them and they also plan to spread them out to continue along down the north side. Uh, they do say that there is some noise that comes from Mountain Ave. So they want to continue that with a tree row down the north side, more to the front of their property. Um, I believe all of their intentions for this is to continue to use their backyard, um, make available space for their children. They don't have that space in the front, given the topography. They only have this little turnaround area. They can't, you know, play some sports, throw things around. They want to be able to create that recreation for their kids in their backyard. And ultimately, with what I think we're proposing, it's not a heavy lift in terms of the ordinance. And I do understand it seems large with the 10%, but again, their driveway takes up that majority of it. This was part of the OZ construction subdivision. This was uh, Sergey Kent sold the, the land to OZ construction, created three or four parcels. A year ago, this board experienced the neighboring parcel. With the to the south, yes. Yep. Uh, my question is, uh, tell me a little bit more about the fencing that's proposed, because it looks like there's a, a rock retaining wall to the south. Yes. And then you've got vegetation. How are we going to set a full fence that is adequate, that protects the public, as well as satisfies the need for a full surround? So the fence on the south side of the wall that's up higher, they have their pool compliant fence. And then on their property, currently they have a post and rail fence. Excuse me, I have noted it to be pool compliant. They were still in discussion of if they're going to be able to convert that with required mesh or whatever is needed for it, or if they end up replacing it with a chain link or aluminum. But they, their plans are to make it pool compliant and they will okay, also so have that pool subject coverage. Subject to a potential approval, it will be pool compliant. Yes, 100%. According to UCC regulations. Yes. Okay. But we don't really know what type of fence. They haven't decided that. I mean, typically when I have Plans like this, we say they have to do it when it gets to the building department for the permits. They have to submit the fence specs that are needed for it. But they're still in discussion with the fence company about can they convert what is existing or do they need to replace it completely? Right. Well, there's two ways to go. You can put a surround and I know Mr. Ringwood is a in-ground pool owner. You could put a surround around the patio and the pool area mm -hmm. or you could make the entire perimeter fence compliance for I believe they want to do the entire perimeter but and now it's also speaking to that when you have an automated cover does that count no okay just checking I know that there are actually some towns that allow it which I was curious about that I don't know they plan they don't want to do a separate around the pool okay. it's either replacing or converting that existing fencing to be pool compliant how high is the post and rail fence uh that couldn't be I mean that couldn't be turned into pool compliant it would have to be then those, then they're going to replace it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I don't. I don't know the, the height of that fence. Off I think, Mr. Coviel, to your point, a posted rail fence can be climbed, right? Well, not just. It's not just that. I mean, even if you put mesh or wire in the back, if, if it's not the back, height, it's not high enough. It's got to be the four feet and then the fifty-four inch. The, yeah, yeah, it's four feet and then fifty-four inches to the gate. So then they are they're going to replace. It. They were talking with the fence companies as part of this, but it was. 
not decided yet when we said that's why I don't have a detail because we didn't they hadn't picked it yet which kind they were also deciding between the privacy versus if they went the aluminum or chain link but because of their plantings that might like it allows the plantings or privacy makes it so like straight and stark that they were still talking about it with whatever they have existing and the entire impervious, impervious improvement is about 1994 9, square feet Yes. And what do you know what the dimensions of the pool are, what the area of the pool is? The pool is an 18 by 36. And so the pool and the spa is a total of 712. And during the excavation for the pool, mm -hmm. what is happening with the soils? The they are exporting the soil. Exporting the soil. Yeah, okay. I, the soil movement. They don't want, their yard is very nice. There's no right. regrading or leveling everything. Because it would trigger, if you were redistributing soils, it would require a soil movement permit. No, they're taking everything out. I mean, just want to go back to the fence. The only reason the fence is important yeah. to me here tonight is if there is a homeowner here um, that has questions about the application, a next door neighbor, right? That may depend upon how they feel, right? What what type of fencing is going to go in? So, uh, if there's no homeowner or neighbor that has any concerns about the application, it's less of a concern for me. But if there are neighbors that have concerns about the whole project, it would be nice to know what we're voting on ahead sure. of. Time. Do you want me to get an answer to the type of fence? No, we can wait and see. If there's if there's no neighbor okay. that has any concern, then I have no concern. Okay, I know. Yeah, the homeowner, concern. right? But at the same time, and not to be disrespectful of their neighbors, but like if a neighbor would they be able to dictate if they wanted aluminum or chain link, or isn't it no, the owner? Dictate, but the applicant is coming here because they need something, right? And you okay. want to be a good neighbor. So at that yeah. time, if the neighbor was saying there's an issue, right? Sometimes we try to work as best we can yes. with the whole community because. You know, as, as much as you improve your home for right. today, you may not be there tomorrow, and the neighbor may be. So, right. again, if there's no neighbor that has any concern, I have no concern. And I did not bring pictures of the backyard, and I know it's not like something where you, you drive by to go all the way up there. Their property in the back is completely, like, evergreen, the arborvitae rows of not being able to see. But if someone does have a question, we are the homeowner is available by phone. I can get that answer of their, their decision that, if needed. That you can't do if they're watching, I can't call. Well, she could call. I can call. Off the record. Off the record. Right. Yeah, and then come back and be able to say this is what they're doing. No, no, no. I would just call, get the answer to come back to you. Are you looking for the the details of the fence? Just the type. It's going to be changing. Maybe if there's a homeowner here that lives next door that may or may not have a concern about the project. If no neighbor has a concern then I have no concern other than the fact that it's pool compliant. But if a neighbor has a concern, I would like to make sure that we address all the concerns of the neighbors while we're here and not leave it up to chance that they're just going to put a fence, right? Because again, so if, if when we open it up to the public, if a neighbor steps forward and has concerns, it would be nice that we work out a solution that's great for the applicant and the neighbor. And again, if no neighbor has a concern, then I have no concern. Okay. Was there any tree removal done or that will be done? No. No? Okay. Mr. Delia, any comments or questions? Nothing. Mr. Deegan? None for me. Mr. Ringwood? I'm good, thank you. Ms. West? No. Mr. Pareda? Um, well, the question I have is kind of out of curiosity. Uh, the construction vehicle, how are they going to kind of move around, being that it's kind of narrow driveway and the narrow whole space back right there? They would be going, um, they'd come up the driveway and then go to the left side of the house. Okay. They have to do a stabilized, and they put stone down as their construction entrance just so they don't bring dirt and debris back down their driveway. But they're not going to go, I mean, the way that that, I mean, you can see from some of the pictures, they're not like coming up on different sides yeah. with this wall. This It levels out right at the garage and they can access and then they can come in right in between in this area. With a the wall, there's like a level area. Gosh, and all the construction materials and stuff, I guess, will be kept behind the house. Or... Yeah, they'll have silt fence to maintain the work during construction. Um, the the biggest part that's going to, I guess, in essence, not impact what people are going to see is during the soil removal. Once the machines are up there, they're going to stay and build. But once they have to remove the soil and the truckloads, that'll be what comes down the driveway and goes out. <laughs> Good. Thank you. 
I, I think what's unique in this situation is the house is set back 141 feet yeah. from the front yard setback, whereas we are accustomed to 35s, 40s, 50s. This one is a little bit different because it's these three or four homes were set on top of a, a vegetated mountain at one time. I'd like to make a motion to open up the meeting to members of the public. May I have a motion by Mr. Coviello? Make a motion to open to members of the public. A second by Mr. Pareda. Second the motion. The meeting is now open to members of the public that have a question or comments regarding our application before us at 115 Kent Drive, Berkeley Heights. Seeing no one, I'd like to make a motion to close the meeting to members of the public. Mr. Ringwood. I move to close the meeting. Public. And may I have a second by Ms. West? Second. And the meeting is now closed to members of the public that have a question or comment. Um, I'm looking at this application and I, I, I understand the driveway. The driveway is, is the knockout punch. Uh, the, the driveway, because the house is set back at 141, we have approved a similar project next door um, it is fair for the neighbors to have a so be able to recreate in, in their backyard. I'm in favor of this application as presented. Um, considering some site conditions, it doesn't seem like there are trees being removed. We will speak to lighting momentarily and uh, stormwater management. With that, uh, Ms. West, any comments? No. Uh, okay. okay, Mr. Pareda. No comments. Mr. Ringwood? I, I think it's a good project, and I agree with you. There's some extenuating circumstances here. So, um, uh, I think it's a good project. Okay. Mr. Oviel? Yeah, I mean, I, I can sympathize. I have a 3,000 square foot driveway myself. It takes up the majority of, of my uh, coverage. Um, but there are ways to get around there, right? You've got a 1,400 square foot patio behind the house, and we're adding another. How, how many total square feet? 1,900 and change. So, I mean, there are ways, right, with, with decks and other ways to reduce the coverage. I mean, just reducing the patio in the back and making it a deck would reduce it by 4.9%, bringing the total application to 25.61 and almost within code. Uh, you know, so I can sympathize with some, with some of the hardship, but there are ways around it. You know, whether we want to address it or, or not is something different, but... How do the board members feel about Mr. Coviello's comment regarding conversion of some of the patio stone to that Trex product that we uh, entertained with, I want to say it was Oak Ridge Avenue a year ago? Or are board members satisfied with the 1900 as presented? Um, it will require a stormwater management system. Uh, I'm satisfied with the 1900 as presented, especially if the neighbors um, recently undertook a project very similar that we also approved. Great point, Mr. Perry. But we don't. Do we have those numbers for the neighbors? I, 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 I don't. Yeah. Right. I mean, so we're saying we approved the neighbors' project, but we don't have the numbers here to say it was the same or not the same. It was just we approved the project next door, and his may have been the driveway. The the driveway that there's four that are. Right. The total knockout punches that are over 10% from the get go. Yeah. Mr. Deegan? I'm good with it as presented um, uh, with the fact that the driveway is uh, is taking up so much of the impervious there. So I'm good with it okay. as presented. Mr. Delia? I'm also good as presented. And Mr. Ringwood, closing vote? Uh, I, I think it's a good question. Thank you. With that said, Ms. Wolf. Uh, conditions, please. Sure. So any exterior lighting cannot be downward directed or appropriately shielded just so it doesn't spill onto the other properties? Yeah, they had, um, they have two fire holes that okay. shown that look okay. like the, very it's low. that low, low dim lighting. There's no other lighting. Okay. And then the stormwater management will be subject to the review and approval of the township engineer. That's okay. Yep. Okay. Um, construction materials will be stored behind the house. The pool fence will be pool compliant. I think that was all of our conditions. I, I, that's how I see it as well. Yeah, there's no tree removal, so they don't need a permit. You'll get any permits for the, the fence if you need them. I think that was it. Thank you, Ms. Wolf. With that said, may I have a motion on an approval, Mr. Ringwood? 
I move we accept the project as presented. I have a second by Mr. Thieven. I second that motion. And a roll call on Kent Drive, please, Regina. Mr. Sullivan. Yes, as presented with conditions. Mr. Cobiello. No. Mr. Delia. Yes. Mr. Ringwood. Yes. Mr. Pareda. Yes. Mr. West Augustine. Yes. Mr. Deegan. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A resolution will be available probably in the month of June towards the summer in the 20s. And touch base with Connie Galante and she'll provide you with the next steps. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your time and your attention to this application and considering the applicant's situation and not being able to be here. Thank you very much. Within the 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill. Our next application this evening is Laura Raftery, 51 Tanglewood Lane, Block 30, 3001, Lot 42 in the R20 zone. This is off the Mountain Avenue on the west side, very close to Lane Field Ed. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It is Wolf. For the record, I did review the notice. It was sufficient as to form content and timeliness, so we do have jurisdiction to hear this case. So with that, I would ask that you raise your right hand and I'll swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And your name and address for the record. Laura Raffney, 51 Penguin Lane. Thank you. And Ms. Wolf, for the record, since this is a D variance, can you just explain for the edification of the board as well as the public what brings us before a D variance and what the requirement is for a D variant. So all parties are aware of what is in need at this point. Of course. So in this case, you're looking to do a cookie business and that is not a use that's permitted in the zone. So you have to get a D1 use variances, which is why you're here. What's unique about a D variance is that there's a higher standard of relief. So instead of just a majority vote, we need five affirmative votes to get it approved. And there's a little bit of a higher standard. So when you testify, you might just wanna explain why you don't think the use was permitted in the zone. And that's called the Medici reconciliation. You don't have to know that, don't worry. But as long as you can just give us some kind of explanation of why you think maybe it wasn't permitted to the ordinance as you go through your testimony. But does that help, Mr. Chair? Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Wolf. And the floor is yours. Thank, thank you. you very much. Tell us about your exciting venture. <laughs> uh, well, let's hope it's gonna be an exciting venture. Um, so up till about two years ago, it was not actually legal in the state of New Jersey to have a home baking operation. New Jersey was the last state in the entire country to allow it. So um, in October of 2021, they rolled out rules and regulations that would allow what they call a cottage food operation. Um, they have certain standards that you have to meet. You have to um, have like a, a food, go through food manager certification. There are certain restrictions on what type of foods that you can offer. Um, and then you have to get licensed by the state and um, through the state application process, they will you know look over what you are intending to offer to the public and, and opine as to whether or not it's acceptable. Once you get licensed, um, you know, you have certain other requirements as well in terms of labeling um, for ingredients and allergens and what have you. Um, the operation has to be entirely out of your home. Um, you know, making of the product, packaging of the product, everything has to be out of your own home. And it can only be either delivered directly to the consumer through they can pick it up at your house you can deliver it to them, or you can participate in farmer's markets or other vendor um, events. Um, so it is a relatively limited operation, but um, the reason a lot of people fought very hard for this for many, many years in New Jersey is because it's really very prohibitively expensive to try and do this out of a commercial kitchen. Um, so um, that's kind of the, the background. Okay. Um, so it's, I think it's becoming, you know, I'm not going to say popular, but people are kind of starting to catch on. And I, but I think, um, municipalities, you know, are trying to catch up because it was not even legal in the state at all. Well, you're number one for the examining board of reports. Um, Thank you for sure. 
So um, what, I, what I will offer is I have a, a little experience in managing this. And so when I stand here and tell you that I truly do not believe I will be a nuisance to my neighbors, um, my kids and I actually started a nonprofit during the pandemic. It was basically a virtual bake sale. And for the record, these are both of your children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just one. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and so, um, like, we basically had a virtual bake sale. We raised money for um, Relay for Life, local food banks, Silver Liming when it was still in operation. Um, and half, at least half my neighbors on our street actually ordered for us, ordered from us regularly. Um, that said, I also manage a lot of the, you know, giving the consumer through delivery. So there aren't really a lot of people coming to my house. I don't actually really love the idea of a lot of strangers coming to my house. Um, in addition to that, I have, do not expect any material uptick in delivery trucks coming to my house. Um, I manage uh, the inventory through either personal shopping, um, you know, at, you know, at the sites, or I combine, you know, the materials with home deliveries that I wouldn't be getting anyway. So I strongly believe that I can manage it in a way that it would not be a nuisance to my neighbors. In terms of the production, do you need additional commercial equipment installed in your home? Is there, are there multiple There's ovens no, or conventional I, so ovens? I have, I have a double oven in my house. I've had a double oven in my house since I moved into it almost 25 years ago. Um, I mean, I've replaced it since then, but so the upper oven is for the household. The lower oven is for baking. Um, there's no additional building changes, anything that needs to be done to the house or the property. And just to confirm upper oven and lower oven, that's one unit in your primary kitchen, not a second separate in the basement, right? One unit, yes. Do you have any signage proposed? I don't, I don't. The, the only thing I might consider is, um, you know, maybe one of those things you can like stick in the ground if, you know, somebody's coming to pick up and then pull it right back up again, but I have no, Type of permanent, permanent a sign. Standing sign in a residential neighborhood is prohibited. Okay, it that's... would require another trip back. Right. Yeah. And I don't know how successful a commercial sign in a residential neighborhood right. would be received at this. Uh, it's a very interesting concept. Uh, comments from any members of the board at this point with the testimony, Mr. Deegan. Kind of cookies, you mean. Uh, my specialty is shortbread, but I, I do, you know, I do regular classic type cookies. And then now the big thing now is like the big gourmet stuffed cookies. So you name it, we can do it. That's great. No, I'm, you just have a fan in me because I'm a baker. Oh. Um, I've actually looked into this process for myself at one point. So we have our second application. <laughs> <laughs> but back during the pandemic as well. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I make a family recipe cookie that people happen to enjoy, but it's usually Christmas time. But um, I think it's a great idea. I wish you the best. Thank you. Ms. West? Uh, no questions, but definitely wish you the best. And once you blow up and you actually have a store, hopefully it will be in Berkeley Heights. Thank right. you. Big shop, so. Mr. Coviello? No questions. Mr. Rita? So I'm just curious, how do you go about acquiring new customers? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, it's, it's all digital media kind of thing. I, and I have, I have an existing base of customers already from doing the, um, nonprofit. So. Now you're able to ship the product all the No, well, we can, sh we can ship it within New Jersey. Um, but nothing can actually, we cannot facilitate anything leaving New Jersey. It has to stay within New Jersey. Um, everything has to be within the state. So no, we can't ship um, broadly. So yeah. it's not, I, you know, I can't set up an Etsy shop for this, for example. So your target audience is the local. Correct. Market. Correct. So it would be relatively small. And in addition to that, the state actually puts a revenue cap on how much you can earn annually um, from the operation. Are there any like required state inspections or anything of the facility? That I mean, that's the the beauty of it. It does not require 
an inspection unless there's an issue, like if you if somebody complains, um, your uh, one of the requirements for your lab labeling is to explicitly state that the product is made in an uninspected kitchen. Um, but the expectation is is with the food manager training that you have to go through and you have to prove you have to send in with your application to the state for the cottage food operator license you have to send in proof that you pass that class um so you have to go through that certification before you can even apply for the license and there's a state board of health inspection there's no inspection, but this is there's no inspection unless there's in, like an issue or somebody complains or something like that. But that's um, is there any permit or license from the local municipality as far as Board of Health? No. no. So the Board of Health defers to the state okay. and the Board of Health. I mean, the, the other point I was going to make um, was that if you actually apply to uh, participate in an in-town event, the Board of Health will approve cottage food. Like if they show their license, the the Board of Health in Berkeley Heights will approve it, which means um, external people have access to our town's events and our own residents can participate as the ordinance is written right now. Mr. Ringwood. Yes. So uh, you, you mentioned, I think, the first question I had is that the limitations on what you can do by the state is based on a revenue cap, how much you can earn in a year? Um, the limitations by the state is, are, aren't are just based on a revenue cap. It's also based on what you can um, also offer as a product. Um, because products or amount of products? No, it's really based on um, anything that needs to be time or temperature controlled. So if you have to like refrigerate something or if it has to be heated, um, in order for to avoid foodborne illness, you can't offer it. So, for example, I can't do anything with cream cheese. And, and this is more a curiosity question. Like, are, are these single items? Are they packaged items? They're individual. I well, I would individually. Yeah, you individually package them, and then each of those individually packaged items has its own label that has the ingredients. It has to have. Um, the name and location of where it was produced. It has to have the cottage food operator license on it. Um, and if it had any allergens and that it was and explicitly state that it was produced in an um, uninspected kitchen. If you'll allow me, if no disrespect intended to refer to your your baking as a as a unit. Um, <laughs> what what's your capacity for number of units in any given day? Um I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not actually I mean, sure. Huh? How many does he need? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, you'd, I, you'd get ahead of things if it were like for Christmas, for example, you know, that's like you get ahead of things, you make dough ahead of time and freeze it. Um, so I, it, it's just me. I have no intention of hiring any employees. So, um, and I would be having a, a website that basically probably like would limit how many orders I could take for any given day. Plus you could do it based on time. I mean, however long it takes you to make a batch based on 24 hour day, you could basically yeah, back depends. into what you could produce. Yeah, it depends on the item. Right. Yeah. You know, shortbread I can do in my sleep. Um, as opposed to now like the you know larger gourmet stuff cookies, though those they're that's an iterative process because you got to make the stuffing and then you know you have to make more dough to make enough cookies. So it's it it depends on the item. And just because you brought up employees, does the state limit or have any conditions in terms of number of employees that a cottage bakery can have? They don't limit the number of employees. Um, it all has to take place in the home, and obviously, to file, you have to follow all the you know tax and employee um, regulations. You know, with like having the poster up and with their rights and all that. So. Um, so all that's still in play, but it's in like in somebody's home. Are you allowed to have like uh, the ingredients you're using to sell and create these cookies uh, stored in the same refrigerator or freezer as your own personal use, or do you need a separate freezer or refrigerator? You're, you're allowed to you're allowed to store them with your own. I don't. I actually would have a completely separate section from the home. Um, I have like separate bins. 
separate ingredients so that you know I can um, I more confident to minimize contamination. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Mr. Draymond, then. Mr. Delia. Just it was a very informative presentation. Thank you. Do you have a table at Scott's Plains Farmers Market? I don't, because I had to get through you guys before I can uh, I can go legit. I'm, I'm, I'm at the Scott's Plains Farmers Market every Saturday. So. Yeah. No, I was just curious. You plan on possibly doing it? Yes. Good right. luck. Thank you so much. Great. I'd like to make a motion to open up the meeting to members of the public. I may have a motion by Mr. Coviello. Make a motion to open to members of the public. I have a second by Mr. Pareda. Second the motion. The meeting is now open to members of the public that have a question or, or comment regarding our application before us at 51 Tanglewood Lane. Seeing no one, I'd like to make a motion to close the meeting to members of the public. Mr. Ringwood. Uh, so moved. And a second by Ms. West. Second. The meeting is now closed to members of the public regarding a question or comment. Um, I appreciate your presentation this evening. It's very interesting. I appreciate your honesty that you came before the zoning board for an opportunity to move on to your enterprise. Uh, I'm in support of your application. I do appreciate the fact that it is very limited. I don't, I don't see an impact there on your cul-de-sac street there. Signage would be prohibited. That'll be a condition of resolution. In the event you needed a freestanding sign, you're welcome to apply to the zoning board and the zoning officer at a later time. But uh, I would be in favor of your application considering the testimony provided this evening, and especially that it's one kitchen, one unit, one refrigeration system, and it's not on multiple levels involved. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Coviello, any final comments? No, thank you. Mr. Deegan? Uh, no, no further comments. Mr. Delia? No. Mr. Ringwood? No, I don't need good luck. Mr. Perea? No. Ms. West? No. I got a motion to approve this application from a board member. Make a motion to approve it. We have a motion by Mr. Perea. May I have a second? Second. We have a second by Ms. West. Uh, conditions are different here, right? This yeah, she'll have to comply with all the requirements for the permit, of course. And like you said, she got the law perfectly, just so you know. Um, there are labeling requirements. The cap is $50,000 as far as how much she can make, so that will definitely limit you. Um, no signage, as we said. Whatever the health department needs from you, I don't know if they'll actually need anything. No, and then I guess you'll just keep up with registration. It's annual, correct? Uh, Biannual. Bi Biannual? Okay. Gotcha. And then you'll comply with the training requirements, as you said, and there's no different waste removal. You'll still have the same garbage and everything like that. So I don't think there were any other conditions. No, it's, it's, it seems like it's low key to start and we wish you well. And please take advantage of the, the media opportunities. Uh, we mentioned the Scotch Plains Farmer's Market. There's an event in town, I believe, in June. Yeah, June 9th is the June 9th is an opportunity. And you know, there are several towns, you know, Gillette offers, New Providence is very welcoming. There are a number of local municipalities that would welcome opportunity. And I believe there's a very large one in Westfield as well. And it was very, very nice to see you at the Winter Walk as well. Oh, um, you know, it was a, an opportunity. Thank you. With that said, um, let's take this to a vote. Regina. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Ms. Coviello. Yes. Mr. Delia. Yes. Mr. Ringwood? Yes. Mr. Pareda? Yes. Ms. West Augustine? Yes. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Good luck with everything, and there will be a resolution memorialized probably someday in the middle of June, right? June 23rd ish? I think that's around. Is that the target? Unofficial, yes. Great. But you can start whatever you need to start assembling and touch base with Connie. If you need to coordinate anything with the construction department, just circle in and it seems like you're in the right direction. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank, Thank, Thank you. And our next application this evening is <coughs> application 230018, the Gilbowski residence located at 20 Overhill Way. Block 3501, lot 11. Thank you. 
And for the record, the notice was sufficient as to form content and timeliness, so the board does have jurisdiction to hear this case. So with that, I will swear you both in. Would you both raise your right hands? Do you, sorry. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you got? Thank you. And your name and address for the record? Trevor Lebowski, 20 over the line. Mike Lebowski, 20 over the way. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I know last month we had a little bump in the road. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's been it's been a the, the, the legal notice. That's that's okay. We're here this evening. If you can just take me before we get into the legal source of the uh, application, why don't we tell us a little bit about how you came to Berkeley Heights, what the home was like, and the changes that you have made, and then we're going to take it from there and then work sure. our way out. So um, three years ago, we moved into Berkeley Heights almost on May 28th. Um, we are a blended family. We have four children together, four girls, young girls. Um, and um, we love the opportunity of Berkeley Heights. I was in Morristown, Clinton, and um, we looked in this vicinity um, because we're a blended family. We have family. His children are in New Providence. Um, so we looked at surrounding areas and we thought it was a good fit based off of culture, people, town. Um, and obviously at the time that we bought, the market was pretty bad and trying to find a house for four kids was pretty hard. So um, we were presented this opportunity with our neighbor, um, who is our realtor, um, that although we bought at the height of the market, we knew that this was going to be a huge job. This house was built in 1984. Um, we bought from the original owners. Um, we met her and we're very to be able to speak to her. She was an older woman um, who was wonderful to us and even said, you know, I've tried to keep up with it, but we know, you know, the carpets were pink and the walls were, you know, had grass cloth from 1990. Um, so everything in the house we knew we are going to have to redo, including the kitchen, the basement. We haven't done, we haven't touched everything we had to do. We had to do the kids' room, meaning, you know, paint the walls. Um, so we are inundated with projects. Um, the one thing that um, we noticed when we first came there, because it was the summer, was our backyard was pretty much, we couldn't use it. Um, it was on a slant, the kids were falling, the deck was dilapidated, it had mites in it, there was animals underneath it, the shrubs that were on the side had tons of, you know, gnats and fleas, we couldn't even sit on the deck at night, it wasn't enjoyable. Um, and it was actually a risk to our kids, because our kids were getting splinters, it was a wooden deck, it was built, you know, back then, it was not taken care of. Um, so we, um, are outside people. We love enjoying, you know, the outside, the outdoors, we go camping, we travel a lot. Um, and our priority was the outdoors because we want to be out there all year. Um, and so we took on the project of doing the backyard. Um, Mike will take you through the, that, that, but, um, I just want to make this very clear. There are no ill intentions. I feel that possibly, you know, we, we're here for reasons of, we won't say, but, um, you know, despite what others may say, this is, there's no ill intention. We want to do right by the town. I have to be honest. I've never owned a home. It's going to be 44. I owned condos and co-ops. I was a single mom for a really long time. So my, my, you know, the town he lived in was different. Coming here, rules, regulations are very different from what I'm used to, but I have no problem. We've done everything up until this point that was suggested by the town, by whoever that guy was that came to Tombaco, we did everything. Everything they suggested, we did. So we, we don't have a problem with that. We want to do right by our neighbors. We have the pictures that you have, just so you know, we've already installed new shrubs in the back. Um, we, we had permits to take down trees. We took, you know, we are trying to make it as livable, right? For the situation that we know that we're in, as well as for our neighbors. Um, as well as our children, most and foremost, for, importantly, right? And now we're able to use the backyard. I will say we did take your recommendation on contacting the con contractors. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. I, so I the was, I, yeah. I'm a little disappointed that the contractor or an engineer or someone's not here, but... We can explain. But, but when we parted ways, I said, no. you're, you're entitled to present so how yeah. you speak, but we're going to go into that. We appreciate the fact that you've given us some of the history about the two of you getting together. We wish you the best here in Berkeley Heights. You've got a growing family. I realize you have a sloped yard, but we're going to start from you purchased a home with a sloped yard. And Michael, is that your person? I think you're going to take it over from here and tell us a little bit about the changes about the, the we're not really interested in the 
inside of the house, and I, I hope it's yeah, to sure. your own liking. But let, let's talk about lot coverage, and let's talk about there's a significant change in grade, which is the sticky wicket here. But we'd like you to please you know, explain to us. Okay. We were misguided yeah. from the beginning from the original contractor we had. Um, you know, he dumped dirt in our yard, told us everything you know was going to be okay. He was going to raid our our law, raid our yard. We got stopped by the town, right? Tom Baco flagged us. Uh, we got an we got an architect. We got a soil and erosion grading plan uh, drawn up by a landscape ar architect. His name is Michael Jurist out of Milburn. Um, he's not here tonight because he's he's got Parkinson's, so can't he can't get here. Um, so that was a nightmare for, from that contract. We fired that contractor um, and hired RG Premier out of Berkeley Heights. Uh, he was supposed to be here tonight. Um, Again, another, I'm not making excuses, but he's not here. He texted us 10 minutes before yeah, we right. were supposed to So be we here, just so. assumed he wasn't coming. He said he would answer any questions outside this meeting, but obviously we know we're here for we're, we're, a public we're here. hearing. Why don't you tell us, you know, from the day that you broke ground, when, what day did you break ground, and how did we get to May 23rd, 2000? You probably broke ground in April 2023. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we... So it was about a year ago. Yeah, we got we got flagged probably right at right at the end of April. Okay. Uh, and then the landscape architect and the drawings through Tom Baco didn't get approved until let's call it July. Which one we probably yeah, we probably started back. Now did Tom Baco require a existing topography map and a post? Yeah, we had a we had a topographical survey done by um, a company down south. I think it was the one who did our original survey. Okay. Uh, so they did our topographical. The landscape architect was provided with the topographical uh, and built the plan off of that. Do you know when you purchased the house three or th was three years ago, mm -hmm. was there a deed restriction or any information regarding easements or anything on your property to your knowledge? Because there may be. You're in a subdivision i believe it was called the er development from the 80s and then holly muse behind you came in shortly thereafter there were a number of easements and driftways that were part of that project there was also a conservation easement at one of the first parcels in holly muse and i think that conservation easement is actually adjacent to your backyard so we're just a little bit sensitive with what your any, any deed information that you have we had to nothing is that Tom Baco and the engineer came to our yard. Uh, was it Tom Solfaro? Tom Solfaro, yeah. Okay. They spoke with RG Premier. Uh, another gentleman in the room was in our backyard as well. Um, and they talked about the retaining wall, they talked about the swale that needed to continue down to that. I guess, I don't know what that is. Yeah, whatever that the drainage is down, have, from down there. Have, there is probably a swale in your, I'm assuming that you had somewhat of a 45 degree angle. And I'm not an engineer, but I'm just trying to figure it out. So there's yes. a slope down we towards Holly Muse. Yep. Yep. And in, in the back of Holly Muse yeah, yeah. is the conservation easement. Yes, and it's our neighbor in yeah. Holly Muse. Along yep. that, between your lot and between the Holly Muse area is an area called a driftway. Mm -hmm. And a driftway is an opportunity if it needed to heave a couple of rocks that you dug up on the yard. That's the area, but that's also a passageway for wildlife. No, no, we understand that. Yeah. And, and Tom uh, Solfaro, I don't know his first name, Tom Solfaro. Tom, Tom Solfaro. Tom Solfaro yeah, yeah. recommended that we put in River large stones, I'll call it. Yeah, and, they, and we did they, that. They put stones back there. They, they did the swale down that way. But the stones are on top of the retaining wall, correct? Um, no, they're not. No, okay. they're behind it. Okay. Yeah. And the retaining wall is only, I mean, it's, it gradually comes down to what? Not even a level, right? One level. Okay. The retain, since we're talking about the retaining wall, how high from grade is the retaining wall? Is it four feet? Is it two feet? Is it? It's less than four feet. It's less than four feet. Okay. Now, if it's less than four feet exposed, that includes the cap that's mm -hmm. on. How about the foundation? How many courses below grade are is the foundation? I can't answer that question. Okay. 
because the, the if you're telling me it's three feet eleven inches, for example, mm -hmm. and you have two courses of of uh, tackle block underneath and the foundation, that makes it a greater than four foot fence, which requires an engineer to sign off on it. So I think this project may qualify for an engineered sealed set of plans, unless you already have that. I'm not yeah. sure engineered sealed set of plans. You, you, the, it, anything in excess of 48 inches requires an engineer sign for the from integrity the from the from at your expense, your your hire, and that's transferred to the borough or the township for so a landscape year. architect wouldn't do that? A landscape architect, if he's qualified as a surveyor that can provide that service, the the town would absolutely entertain that. But anything in excess of 48 feet, if we've got 311 and two courses that are underground, that counts towards that and the cap that counts like, towards I that. Can't, yeah, I'd have to talk to the RG Premier and see yeah, what I, I, I would because that's significant because it changes the flavor of a four foot wall as opposed to a five foot wall. I understand. It, it changes that. But please continue. I didn't mean to digress. Can you repeat what that is so I can write it down so that way we can make sure that we can. Well, this is all going to be on tape. Oh, I'll have okay. a complimentary copy for you. But sure. um, in the state of New Jersey, there is a requirement that if there is a retaining wall put in at four feet or greater, that an engineer, it needs to be signed up by a licensed engineer. My feeling is just by your honesty this evening that it's probably greater than four feet. So someone needs to sign up on the integrity of the wall and then stormwater management is gonna be another conversation that we're gonna have. But something's telling me that you needed to fill in the backyard to go from a 45 degree angle to make it level, to make it a usable backyard and we totally understand that, mm -hmm. but there was a change here, mm -hmm. which leads to my next question. How much soil was deposited in your backyard? Either by the dump truck load. Yeah, there was seven loads. Or, okay, seven, so loads. seven loads is greater than 10 cubic yards. And after 10 cubic yards of soil, a Somerset soils permit is required we we submitted for the Somerset. Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. And do you have the documents? It was less than five thousand square foot. Five thousand or five hundred. Five thousand square foot, and we work it. That's, if that's the rule. That. If five thousand, let's. I, I think we're going to need to circle into the borough and here, but yeah, five thousand and five hundred are two completely different numbers. In I provide service and stand within five hundred mm -hmm. in area and. 10 cubic yards is the magic number. If it's different here, absolutely, we will give you the benefit of the doubt, but we submitted I, I'm, I'm concerned with we how much, how many cubic yards of soil allowed to your property, because again, we changed the 45 degree angle to level out your backyard. So we're concerned about that. And do you have, does your contractor of hire have history of the tickets? Regarding he does the quality of the soil, where the soil came from. We, that so right, we had we're prior, concerned about that because yeah. we don't want this to come from a contaminated site and deposited in, in Berkeley Heights. We don't, for our safety as well as your safety. Mm -hmm. And then it leads to, and I know the environmental commission specialist isn't here, it leads to an open space inventory and open space question. We don't have the figures. Okay. Can your contract to secure those tickets? We no longer have contract. We no longer have contact with that original oh. contract. Oh. <clears throat> so we're, we're unsure of the quality of the soil and where it came from. It came from other pool projects. I can't talk to the pool P O O L. P O O L. Okay. So other people in your area may have been excavating. There was surplus soil. We took was... soil from a Short Hills location that was executed. It was virgin soil. I know that one. Yeah. Um, the other ones, I don't. I don't know. But the original contractor was a pool and landscape guy. But we're not sure where that soil came. The origin of the soil and the quality. I probably could find. I probably. I don't even know if I could contact. 
Okay. I look, we appreciate your honesty. I know you're here. I know, I know you're trying to do the right thing. It took us a long time to get here, but okay, please continue. What well, the board will have additional questions. Uh, we, my wife talked about the deck. Uh, the deck was taken down and we put in a patio where the deck was located uh, with a barbecue, um, a stone barbecue area. And that's about 745 square foot yeah. addition to the backyard. The patio, the patio was less than the deck, but it was 740, I think you guys have there. Yep. And then the barbecue was another 24. So we said uh, we have seven forty five tall now. Now the the deck is an impervious product. We found out okay, the patio is a pervious product. In nineteen eighty four ish, when the development was created, this was called a cluster development. No two parcels are the same. The developer, I believe it was ER development, created this area and the, the purpose that Decks were put in place was because they were considered pervious opportunities. Not yet. We're 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 getting we're gonna open it up to members of the public. So um was was were considered pervious. They were trying to keep the parcels under the 25% threshold, which is why there was a deck and I 1984, yeah, it's time to replace the deck. And I, I know what you wanted to do regarding a impervious patio, but that increased the overall impervious coverage. Yeah, which we don't seem to be excessive. I mean, we, we know neighbors have close range of that where we were told it was a smaller lot in the Cinnamon Ridge area, um, which is harder to keep in those you know ranges. Um, and the way that we did the patio, if we cut it shorter, it would look really odd and weird. And you know, in terms of like we have the the walkway up to the patio, and we have which was there before um, a landing. So, I mean, to cut it was just it would look very silly. But you didn't ask Tom Baco for the permit. Correct, because okay. we, we, you know, like like you, you said, you, you, I didn't, you know. didn't realize there was a permit. No, of course not. I, I would well, never have done this. Listen, I'm a, by the by I, the rules, and so we're, what, we're, we're, you know. we're not here to hurt you. We're yeah. here to help you. Of course. And had you had you approached the town first, he, Tom would have provided you with the requirements that are needed. If you needed a Correct. larger deck and you were encroaching in the rear yard, the side yard setback. That's fine. There's an opportunity before this board to grant relief based on the benefits outweighing the detriments. Yeah, so totally. I, mean, mind mind. I know where this is. This falls in the realm of forgiveness applications, and I've dealt with probably fifty of them between here and then Fanwood, and we're trying to help you through the process. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So your next comments. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know. So we're here for you know acceptance of of what we've done. Obviously, um, if there's things that that you feel that would improve our backyard, the drainage, um, we, we're all for it. Um, Was there a stormwater management plan incorporated into the uh, 745 square foot improvements? We it was part of the original plan when when the deck was there. Well, the deck the deck was the deck is a pervious situation, so. You added some post deck mm -hmm. in 2000, April of 2023. You increased a retaining wall and 745 square foot of a recreational patio and barbecue area. Was there a stormwater management plan incorporated in that contract? We didn't get it right. Yeah, like I said, I appreciate your honesty. Um, uh, yes, Ms. West, I was going to open it up and we're first on the list. Thanks. Would potentially, um, like, would the landscape contractor potentially also um, have done a stormwater management contract for them? I mean, or not contract, but stormwater management plan that maybe they don't even know is built into the landscape design? The landscape contractor that you worked with potentially has, has he done one? I don't even know what a stormwater management is. I mean, okay. yeah, we. I'd love. Okay. He's still our contractor, so yeah, we could definitely. Yeah, he so, I mean, he's in town, so. 
some thunder. So it, it, it doesn't sound like there was a stormwater management plan incorporated into this specific project. Mr. Perea? Um, would you happen to have any pictures of what it was before when the deck was still there before any work was done? There was a fun online, but I, mean, I did not print any. I'm sorry. I know we were just, and, and quite frankly, you know, this past week we were working hard. We put boxwood trees, you know, back there, uh, some lavender, some annuals. Um, our plan is to also put um, more trees back there for privacy. Um, you know, it's. Do you know what the view is? If, if I was standing on the Holly News conservation easement or the parcels back there, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at your house, am I looking at a four foot retaining wall and a trampoline and a patio? What, what am I looking at from that view? Because the view has changed since. Yeah, I hope it actually April. looks nicer. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we I, take I walks back there. My kids ride their bikes back there. The retaining wall is beautiful. We picked out a specific stone. Uh, it doesn't match our house um, because it's actually nicer than our house. Our house is all brown. But well, well, you don't see the retaining there, right? The well, neighbors see the retaining. The neighbors do. Because, yeah. and honestly, I wish I did. You picked the decorative I wish I did. Well, you picked a decorative wall. We picked it's a not beautiful just a bunch of gray stone. I don't know if the or railroad railroad railroad. Side stepped up. Okay. I mean, to us, it's beautiful. I, I, I love it exposed. To, uh, I, I asked the contractor, actually. I asked him to make sure the tops were exposed because I think it's a beautiful stone. I mean, Hell, we paid a ton of money for it too. Um, the River Rock, we did specifically for our neighbors. We didn't have to. No one said we had to do it. It was a suggestion, and we did it that same week. We paid the money to get it done. Um, we know there's trees missing. We want to put trees up. We want to do. We wanted to come here first and see what was necessary. Uh, we know we open up to the public. We see our neighbor here. We're open to suggestions. We want to put trees up that will block our house for the privacy of our, our own self, too. And we have children. We have little children. So we get it. And potentially at some point, maybe even a fence, because we have small children that play back there. And I want to be, we're right off Mount Nap, too, right? Yep. Uh, cars fly down that road. People walk by our house all the time. So eventually, you know, not a pool, but a fence. Yep. Okay, the the installation of the river up was whose recommendation? Um, uh, so far, so far, so far. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, do, so, do get something to to capture the water to slow it down because yeah, water from your home and the drains that builds up and builds up and builds up and hits hits that wall. And, and eventually, the last thing we want is up the wall to heave. Mm -hmm. Mister Ringley, by by now. Okay, Mr. Perina? No, nothing right now. Thank you. Mr. Delia? Nothing. Mr. Deegan? Nothing. Mr. Coviello? Nothing at this time. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to open up the meetings to members of the public that have a question or comment regarding the Gildowski parcel at 20 Overhill Way. May I have a motion, Mr. Ringwood? So moved. And a second by Ms. West? Second. Thank you. The meeting is now open to members of the public that have a question or comment regarding the application before us. And we have Rich Bauer stepping up. Thank you, Mr. Bauer and Ms. Wolf. Rich Bauer, 68 Debbie Place. I was asked by Jim and Robin McConaughey and Joyce Johnson to come because I was one of the developers involved in what I was going to say to you. Was, Hang on, is this a comment or a question? I'll swear you in. Yeah, let's swear, Mr. You can just raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be gone. Thank you. I was one of the developers involved with the Holly Music Subdivision. So, You've got the Overhill subdivision, which they're in, and then the Holly Muse is on the backside. So there were two separate projects. There's that driftway in there. There's the conservation easement on the McConaughey property. The water flows for the Overhill properties down at the back of their yards into an underground system that's behind McConaughey's and I think Merlot's. Which is two or three houses down. I think Mr. Merlo lives on the Overhill site. Right, a couple houses down from me. So Mr. Merlo used to be a member of the zoning board in the uh, 90s. So it runs down their side of a barn that's there and into the underground system. On the Holly Muse side for one, three, five, and seven Holly Muse, I think. On that side, they, the water, there's a swale in the back of their yards that run down to the back of the McConaughey property where there's a catch basin in the ground that ties into the same system that 
the one on the Overhill side. Sides. So it all goes into an underground system, ends up on the other side of Overhill in that basin you see on the right. Across the street. Right, as you get yeah. down the road on the right. So the concern the McConaughey's had was in a heavy rainstorm, the water will back up from those systems and sit on the ground for a day or two before it all, you know, perks away and runs through the system. So their concern is any more water that gets added quickly backs up in their yard. It's just the way the system was designed. It's done that from day one. It's just, if you get an overflow, it just takes time to get through the, the uh, system. The uh, uh, original plan that was submitted uh, did not include the patio area. So that was 4,813 4, square feet. Had it included the patio area, that would have been Union County, uh, Somerset County Soil Conservation, Tom Baco, probably would have been here six months ago because all this would have come to light. Uh, so the patio wasn't on here. That was the first thing they did part of the project before the wall was built. When I got involved in it, Jim had called me because he was concerned with the water. And so I got a copy of this plan, which is what the board had. Uh, but is that a copy of the site plan of the Holly Muse? This is what was submitted to the town after they got stopped originally when the trees were taken down and dirt was brought in. Then this was submitted to the town. And what document is that? This is the grade plan that was submitted. The grading plan from... 20 over. Right. Okay. You guys had done. That's what the town had on the record. Are we allowed to talk to him? I mean, I don't know how this works. So I'm just making I would make your comment. Comments, so. And then they so, can yeah. make comments or response. So this shows originally the wall was one foot off the property. So the concern became why Tom Safar and Tom Baco got involved was the water coming down from the properties above them towards Mountain on Overhill. When that water gets down to where the wall is going to be, where is it going to go? It's going to get pushed onto Joyce's property or McConaughey's property. So the meeting that was, I was there, Tom Baco, Tom Safaro, I guess they moved the wall back at that point because it's a number of feet off the property line. Is it is it your opinion that the wall that was constructed 100% on the applicant's property? The wall, I think, is. The swell, I'm not sure. There was a property stake that Jim had put in within the past two years. Can you say that one more time? Jim McConaughey put a, it, had a corner property stake put in by a okay, server. The corner property stake. That disappeared with all the construction back there. So we don't know where that is. I know Joyce has a concern of, you know, where's the property line? Okay. So it's possible. But it, it, from someone who's developed that area and your observation, and I know you're not a licensed engineer, and correct me if I'm wrong. Right, I'm not licensed. Okay. <laughs> Is it your opinion that the Gildowski retaining wall that exists today without permit is 100% on their property? Yes, I would say that. Okay, all right. I appreciate so it. That's just a swell, the question. Of swell, that. yep. And that's when the discussion came up. I think the guy was originally going to put mulch in it. And I said, you can't do that because the first storm is going to wash it out. Right. And McConaughey's have piping that if it gets into that, you know, then it's going to be a mess to clean it out. So that's when the river rock came up. So that was definitely an improvement that, that stabilized. Uh, so the, the river rock, the three foot wide river rock that runs the, the length of the Gildowski property has helped the overall situation, in your opinion? I think it might be wider than three feet, but it's... I, I'm not... I'm the, from, you say from helps, the that I... I Instead of the mulch, yeah, instead of the mulch, yeah, you know, it's it's the positive on it's stabilized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know in the environmental report, I just got a, there was a copy of that online. So, uh, under their comments, it, it mentioned trees have apparently not been removed yet. There were quite a few trees removed, so I don't know if that affects it. I believe the Gildoskis provided testimony right. that they spoke to Tom Balco and received permits for any tree removal. Okay. Uh, in the environmental commission report, it talks about recommendations. One of those, it says disconnect any downspouts or sump pumps from the street and connect them to rain gardens 
or vegetative swales. I would strongly suggest against that because now you're taking water that's going to the street right, and you're introducing and it into the Putting back. it back towards the country. It might be worse. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think when he says rain garden, he's not looking to put it, he's not looking to deposit the water into the swale. A rain garden would be self collecting and let it stay. And a rain garden would be very deep, filled with rock and then sand and layered up with plants on top, and the pipe would go in and the water filters down and stays on property. It's not supposed to leave the property. Okay. I didn't see any thing online that explained what was going to get built or how big it was. When they say rain garden again, it's a very generic term. And so when what would happen is if you decided to do a rain garden, you have an engineer design you a rain garden, and then look at our township engineer who would say, this works. And there's some people do it with a dry well, they'll dig a big hole and fill it with rock. Some people put in a seepage pit. So, so there's lots of ways to contain the water on property. And what he's trying to do uh, from an environmental commission perspective is reduce the amount of water running down the driveway, picking up contaminants going into the source system which is why they want to keep it on property. That's what the Environmental Commission would prefer. And then in the back, he mentions on the uh, possibility of using uh, pervious pavers uh, for the patio. I guess one of the McConaughey's concerns is that whatever gets done for the water retention, pervious pavers, whatever the solution is, that while the project is done in town, there's no oversight later on as to the Pervious pavers take a lot of maintenance, I understand, to keep them pervious. Uh, I don't know what the maintenance is. We've always pervious. considered pavers, regardless of the quality of the product, one control set. That's why in, in the last application, we encouraged, uh, uh, the Kent Drive application, we encouraged treks or a decking system, which worked to benefits of other projects that we've worked on by the limit of reducing the impervious coverage. Okay. So you don't. So know. whatever whatever brick you put in front of us, we're counting as hundred percent. It is until the rule changes. You're considered an impervious. Impervious. Because okay. that was the concern that, and then with the rain gardens, do they take maintenance? I mean, I'm not real familiar with the rain gardens, but what prevents? Let's say in three years they move, somebody comes in and sees this rain garden and doesn't like it, but doesn't know it's there for a purpose. Well, it would be recorded in the resolution that a rain garden would have to be there. Now, again, as the neighborhoods change and people come and go, it's very, very difficult to do that. I mean, I have two on my property that I had to put in. I know they're there. I intend to be there forever, but if I'm not, at some point, it's just a very nice garden that somebody may cover over, right? But if, but if it's put in for the purpose of the water retention for this project. It would be, it would be memorialized in the resolution and that's where it's noted. Yeah, it would be a condition of approval. So then the zoning officer could look at it and say, well, they didn't comply with this condition technically, and they could go out and file. But how would somebody violation. that buys a house in 10 years know that that's there? They there's, might not. There's I mean, no guarantee of that. Yeah, there's no guarantee that anybody that comes in and buys another property can know that something's there and not change it. I mean, that's their prerogative when they buy the house. I mean, right. But if this is, is being put in to solve a problem, so it needs to maintain. Stay there. But it's not our job to make it a condition of sale where it's flagged on, you know, something when you're putting it up for sale that they know that it's there and needs to be maintained. Right. And which is that's not their law. Which is why my first comment this evening was there are there any deed restrictions or easements that we should be aware of or driftways? At this point, we can only memorialize it in, in a resolution as a condition of a resolution to be maintained in perpetuity. Parcels change. Right. Parcel ownership so would it be changes. better than to yeah. be putting in an underground tank or pipes or whatever that will hold that water that, and release it slowly because that something that, that, that yeah. may be a condition of resolution. Yeah. Well, and again, that that needs maintenance. So my well, they, they don't really they need maintenance. My mother lives right next door to me. When I built her house, I had to put in a very large pit. And it was a very expensive concrete block that went in the ground. And if we don't take that manhole cover off and take out the leaves, it's like any other system. It will overflow and the water will just come out of the top and go. It needs to be maintained. At one point in time, you didn't see it because of the bushes and trees. So if somebody else bought the house, you wouldn't even know it was there. Every, anything needs to be maintained. I know the ones on it, like Holly Muse, there's two or three huge yeah. tanks in the front of every one of those 
Okay. Tile so the, this one is going to take a lot of leaves to fill it. It's 10 by 10 concrete block, but over time, because every downspout, every leader in the house comes down and goes into one right. giant pit. So all the leaves, all the debris, all washes in over eight, 10 years. I can tell you, it's pretty full. I have a landscaper come and clean it out. It has to be maintained. Anything. I mean, we, we did that during the subdivision, right? The entire part of that whole subdivision on, on Plainfield was the homeowner association had to maintain the swales. Somebody has to maintain them. Right. Otherwise, they don't work. That's what they do. I get a concern with whatever gets the root. When it's handled is more permanent that it can't can be. Can he speak for somebody else? Technically not. If you're if you have the same concerns, that's fine. I'm not sure where you live in relation to where the McConaughey well, is. I, I think Mr. Bauer has an interesting angle because he developed this parcel. Correct? I understand, but he keeps yeah. saying this guy's yeah. concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I understand that. But he, he, he does a lot of work for the McConaughey's. They yeah, unfortunately I, couldn't yeah. make it to them. I know I can appreciate that, but it's third party, right? We right. can't so take that as, as technically your say. So you're you're saying something on his behalf and he's not here to back it up. If you had a written statement with his signature, we could accept it, but you can't speak on his behalf. You can speak on your behalf. And I think as as someone who developed this area or was a subcontractor, you have intimate knowledge of the area. So right. I would speak as Rich Bauer, the professional, as opposed to representing an owner at this point. Okay. So to go back to the, the way the drainage works, it's currently probably maxed out because in a heavy rain, it'll build up in, in Conaghy's property and Merlo's property. So, so just to just so the work, the the stones, the walls, making it worse, making it better, the same. It's hard to say. So, but you say that that problem existed before they even bought that house. In a heavy in a heavy storm, but well, what the concern is, don't make it worse. So when you're okay, in that, but I just want the the, the 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 position is that you've got this condition, and that condition exists before the applicant even bought the house. That was a condition where in a heavy rainstorm, it flooded and puddled or whatever you want to say it, and that existed prior to them ever buying their house, regardless of what right. the work they did. Now, you want to say that what the work they did exasperates that problem, okay. But the problem existed before they- There was a problem before, so don't want, we don't want to see it made worse. Well, any more impervious coming and dump in quickly. That's why I understand. Retain it somewhere and let it out slowly. Yeah. I think that's probably the only comment. Okay. We, we appreciate it. And the lady in the audience has been very patient. Did you have any questions or comments? Um, so when I met you earlier today, I didn't catch your name. And you are welcome to offer a question or comment. And Ms. Wolf will swear you in. And and the Gilbowskis will have an opportunity to provide comments or ask questions. Would you just raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Sophie God? Yes, I do. And your name and address for the record. Um, Joyce Johnson, 3 Holly Muse, Berkeley Heights. Thank you. I am one of the homes that backs up to their okay. property. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And just so I, when you say backs up, so you're on the opposite side of the rock. She's here. Yeah. White House. Here's them. Here's them. This is McConaughey. Got it. Next so door to McConaughey. Okay. And uh, don't don't feel nervous this evening. We don't fight. <laughs> speak, please speak from your heart and let us know what your concerns or any questions that you have. And well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. The first thing I think when their project was started, and I didn't understand from the that they had gotten approval to go in and start cutting all sorts of trees down in the back, which was a little, well, why is all of a sudden all these trees being cut down? And then we see truckload after truckload after truckload. So it was getting to be, what is going to be done back there? And my property, when the house was built, they built a berm that went along the back of, of the property. And then the builders planted trees in there. And this the driftway that I mentioned earlier, is that the area in question? Well, it's, I don't know, it's a 
you know, a, uh, I don't know what the proper well, term is. It's a, they and called it a move. Next to the McConaughey house. I, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I, I, know, I know where your parts is on. Okay. Yeah. So again, well, you know, we get into all the water. And so that was, a, that was an issue. But at this point, they had decided to put in the wall and then they were filling in with the rock to help clear the water down. Now, I don't, I have a problem now because I almost feel my property line needs to be surveyed again because I don't know whether they're exactly on theirs or they're a little on mine or is mine a little oh you, you are so you are and I've got trees that are missing. You are welcome to have your property resurveyed at your expense. Okay. But just to let you know, and it's it's not a few dollars, and I'm sure Mr. Bauer can provide you with some guidance of what he thinks. Yeah, just a survey. If if that gives you some type of reassurance, yes. It sounds like the testimony provided from Mr. Bauer a short while ago. He he believes unofficially that the retaining wall is 100 percent on the Gilbowski. Well, it is. It's just all this rock came okay. down now, too. So I am, I'm just more concerned about the regular. Is it is line. it surplus stone that fell from their property onto your? I don't know because okay. they aren't comes up like this, and I haven't been over it okay. to say okay because I don't know exactly where the line is here. Yeah. And it's funny uh, because I mentioned the driftway. The driftway is that area that yeah. typically back in the old days you people know, just heaped rocks in, in an area and called it a day so the horses didn't trip. Well, I don't know whether they're planning to put any trees back there. It sounds like there's a uh, there is a, yeah, a, a significant were, plan that they because there's a whole oh. section that's kind of wide open that you can see all the way straight through my property right to the right up because the trees are gone. Okay, should this application be approved, and we're a long way from that, mm -hmm. do you have any suggestions of a buffer that you might like to see from your window towards the Gilbowski property? Because the Gilbowski family may consider providing mm -hmm. some additional vegetation in, in your area because it seems like they're... they're a, Receptive to some yeah. additional no, because like, for their personal benefit, I think they want a little bit more privacy. No, I mean, I would place. also like trees put in back there too, something a little bigger than you know the height of this. Right, that, that will be more of that. Unless somewhere down the road, you know, what things aren't working out, I had even thought at one point of putting a fence in, but I know I need a permit, a survey, and a permit on that. So and we appreciate you asking installed. for a permit first before you install. Okay. <laughs> Everything's a permit. It's, it it's, is. <laughs> we're trying to keep everyone honest. Okay. But yes, they, I, I believe that the Gildowski mm -hmm. family may entertain some additional buffering if there's something that you're sensitive to that may have yeah. been removed and creates a little bit more privacy for all parties that might, that yeah, might and work. And it would benefit for the look of the yard. I'm not planning to move anywhere in a big hurry. I'm in the big house by myself, but I plan to stay there. Okay. So, uh, I do have a question for you. Uh, ever since this project was completed, have you <clears throat> experienced any problems in your yard with more flooding? Uh, or have you noticed more water when it rained? Obviously, it's rained quite a bit since the project was completed. Yeah, tell us about it. <laughs> so, no, uh, I I haven't noticed on my side of that raised berm. Water does come down off of Mountain Avenue and continue flowing on, but that area does stay wet. But I haven't noticed it really being that much different. Okay. Whatever. Okay, thank you. Okay. When you look out your window and you see the retaining wall, how high is the retaining wall in your opinion? It's hard to say because the the rock goes up. Oh, I can't say. Okay. I mean, it's not overly high, but but I'm standing there looking. Is it? But is it's it four, kind of, do you think it's four feet or less? I wouldn't have an idea. Any okay. idea? Four, four feet is about. It's got to go below. Is grade it, level. Is it lower or, or the same size or higher than the podium you said again? To me, it looks a lot lower. Okay. 
Yeah, then, then all then that left an area that sloped down, so that's where all this rock went in. <laughs> so that's why I'd like to. It's okay, but I'd rather have trees so there. You're, 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 a buffer, a buffer is most sensitive to. You. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate you coming okay. in this evening. Is there anything else that you'd like to comment or question? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely, please. When you clicked on the height of the wall, I think it showed on the plan that uh, the uh, the corner was just probably just shy of four feet. So but but once then it steps down all the way, correct? And it goes to the other end. It goes to the end of the court. Right. right. However, there's a foundation that's unaccounted for. Right. Probably. Yep. Yeah. So. In the eyes of municipal land use, the foundation, even though it's below grade, counts. <clears throat> so there's a, there's a structure, there's a structure requirement, an engineering structure requirement for anything greater than four feet. Right. Uh, yeah, just a suggestion that in, that be between you and Joyce Johnson. On her burn, there is room for pine trees if. You're trying to screen your yard, and maybe work something out with her and plant them on her berm rather than take up the space on your yard. Uh, and then the only thing we put in, I'm going to say within the past two years, a survey stake in the corner for work we were doing with Connie is right. that disappeared in the construction. Can we have that put back? What does it appear like? Is it underground? You no, know, it was there, and then all the construction with the wall that either got pulled out, run over, buried. It's no longer, nobody can find it. There, there, there may, should this project advance, there may be a prerequisite for a resurvey. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and congratulations on our order, Mr. Bauer. Your, 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 your volunteer service to Berkeley Heights. I, I read something. 45 years. 45 years. Congratulations. And thank you for your service with the Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Thank you. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Skaldowski, the floor is yours for any questions, comments, or rebuttal. This is your opportunity. Yeah, can I make a motion to close the meeting to members yes, of the Yes, thank you. Uh, the meeting is now, uh, thank you, Mr. Cobiel, and I have a second by Mr. Deegan. I'll second, members. The meeting is now closed to members of the public for questions and comments, and the will now the party, please. So there's just a couple of things I want to address. The patio is not done first. The patio is done last. Um, I'm not sure if that was a mistake by, you know, what he said, but um, I think you guys understand that because we went through the motions of dropping the dirt. We couldn't have a patio there and then drop the dirt, right? So was it literally the last thing that we did? Um, in terms of the rain, um, as you know, we've been doing this project for a year and there has been an enormous amount of rain that no one has complained to us. My neighbor who's to the right of us to the left of us, I could complain, but to the right of us, you know, because it's coming from us and it's a pool on the other side of us, which we're also trying to prevent by leveling it out. But to the right of us, there's no issues. Our kids play. We would never want to harm our neighbors and, you know, have rain gushing into anyone's house. Um, let's also remember that before, when we moved in, there was mulch back there, right? So the, the proposed, um, you know, not having mulch there because it could run down. That's what was happening, right? So we believe we improved it by putting that rock there and also because it was suggested and also it made it nicer for our neighbors. Um, there definitely were trees cut down. They were dead, but we had two different um, um, people there. They, they said there's beetles in the street. We had an enormous one around the deck. It was dangerous to our kids, dangerous to our family. It was dead. Yeah, we, we, that was the, the, we had a permit for that. Um, but he looked at all the trees and he's like, all of these are dead. And listen, at the end of the day, I love trees. I love gardening. I, I want to garden in my backyard. We will definitely plant trees. We just wanted this meeting to happen to see what we need to do totality. We only have so much money as I'm sure everybody does. Um, and it's um, something where we want to have live fresh trees, right? Our neighbors that are next to Mrs. Johnson, the trees on our side, right? We had to take trees down over there because they were dead and they were literally leaning towards us. We have little kids, not having that happen. Um, they're all, all dead on the side of our house. So we're looking at their house that's all dead, 
No one cares about that, but we do. And it's our side. So we will put trees along the entirety of the backyard so that it looks nice. We understand that it helps the rain. Um, we are all for it and happy to talk to you about it. Uh, absolutely. Um, and I think that was all I wanted to address. I don't know. So there's any Chairman, I think I'm looking at yeah. I wonder yeah. if you guys would be willing to kind of two-step this approach, which means coming back here at some point. I, no, I, I agree. That's where it, it, but it what, appears that that's where we are at. What I would, what I would suggest is you, you've had a lot of dirt brought in, and, and we're just not sure, while well, we assume and hope that it's good quality, that the first thing you do is you get soil testing. Right, so you have somebody come out. They do core samples throughout the yard. They'll dig, they'll dig down a few feet, pull out cores of dirt, send it away to make sure it's clean fill. Right, if that's clean, great. You get an engineering plan for the wall. It appears that only a certain portion of it may be over four feet. Um, whoever put it in, and the reason they want to do that is because as the weight goes up against it in the water, they want to make sure that it's not going to fall over. Some product isn't meant to be stacked four foot high, which means it needs to, it steps itself back at some point. Mm -hmm. And then there's fabric that has to go under every so many feet with drainage and so on. So again, the water doesn't build up on the, on the pressure on the wall. So you get an engineering plan for the wall. So and can I, yeah. I just say, sure. Uh, we do have the engineering plan for the wall. The landscape architect did that. So it's just a matter of RG Premier. Submitting it to the township engineer for, for approval. Which, 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 which I think we have approval which, on. Which, which includes yeah. the foundation. If that wall has been certified by a licensed surveyor, that's or a, engineer, I get your that, That's just what I'm saying. We do have the, the okay. plan. So, so that, you, you may have, that, that, that may be a cost savings measure right there. Yeah. It, it's it's I'm pretty sure we're not going to this meeting will not you you will not have a vote this evening this is going to be carried but we're yeah. providing you with additional guidance and I think Mr. Caviello has brought up some great points um, I mentioned the soil tickets but if a soil test is taken the soil the soil test offsets the need for the tickets so not, we've got that no, we've no, spoken no, about uh the no, height no, and no. the engineering and then mr Coviel, i didn't need to steal your thunder no no it was just, again if you get soil testing if you've got the plan for the wall and then you've got a new survey that shows topography right that again the township engineer says this is okay for drainage right so if you came back before us and said okay the soil's clean the wall is in good shape it's okay to be here and it's certified by the engineer and we didn't change topography too much that the town is upset about. We can keep this by, by their standards. What we're looking at then is coverage issues, mm -hmm. right? Not all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so hopefully it's simple that the soil's clean, the walls in, in good shape. And and I, I think to that point, I think it's important. We need to know the have a number of the cubic yards of soil that was deposited on the property. An engineer that you're working with can probably do that calculation based on what the original topography was and what the post topography was and do a calculation. Do a calculation. It yeah. may trigger a Somerset soils permit post, but we need to make sure. I mean, we're more interested and hung up on the quality of, of the soil. Mr. Did, Green. Did, did you say that you have that, that you already applied to Somerset? We did based on the original plan. And, and you have something back from them that says yep. that you're okay. Yep. Okay, yeah. great. And then so you start to so make that part of the package that okay. we get. I do have a question on the topographical. So sure. you want to finish topographical. Yeah. We have right. a pre and a post. Yeah, yeah. so this is the post. So this is what, when you're showing it to the township engineer. Okay. This is the grade of the property. He'll look at the water runoff and say, this works, this doesn't work. And then he may recommend storm. Hey, you can keep this. We've got to put in some stormwater management, whether it's a rain garden, whether it's a dry well, whether whatever it may be, that's what they would recommend. So now when you're coming back again, you've solved all of these outstanding issues, right, that you may not have meant to create but are here. So now what you're, when your application comes in, what we're looking at is really coverage, right, which is the patio versus, the, which is the patio that wasn't there that is now there that's creating a 4% change in coverage. Appreciate that. Yeah. I do have a question. You sure. had mentioned there was a large tree that you had to remove and you needed to get a permit. Yep. And you got a permit. How did you know you needed a permit to remove the tree but not a permit to do the rest of the work? Um, I talked to my neighbor 
And she said, you know, in this town, anything you want to remove from a tree perspective that's larger, that's like large, like that, that tree, you have to call the town. Uh, you got the permit from who? Tom Baco? They came in and marked, marked the trees for Yeah. Them. I did like look on the town website and see that I had all these other things to do. I literally was like, we need to get take the deck down. And also our contract was like, you need to get, you know, in order for to take the deck down, I need you to take the tree down. Yeah, yeah I'm just curious how... When Mr. Baca went over there and saw this huge tree, didn't kind of lead in the conversation of, all right, you know, what else is going on? You know, so, but it, it nothing was there at that point. Yeah, we took the trees there. down first. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing was in our backyard at that point. Okay. And, and with the topography map, let, let's have the property restaked out at least on the rear points so we can. Stakes are there. Stakes are there? Yeah. Right. He's, he's talking about his. Yeah, we didn't take we didn't take any of their stakes out. We have our stakes. If, we don't if, if your if your stakes are there, let's just make sure that they're they're properly marked. And we respect the project one hundred percent in your property. The good thing is that to Mr. Coviello's point, if you have all that documentation, obviously the neighbors not complaining that their yards are flooding after the work was done. They really haven't noticed the difference as far as the water. But, I mean that's a good thing. Yeah. And you have a lot of the documentation needed anyway. I mean, the recommendation of the Riverstone, we didn't want to pay an extra five grand for the Riverstone, but yeah, we did. Yeah. We put it in. Yeah. The, you know, and to Mrs. Johnson's defense, I mean, maybe it is closer to her berm, mm -hmm. but it's it was put in based on Thomas Tofaro and, and Tom Bach. I, I think Tom and Tom were trying to help alleviate the situation. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, you would have no objection. Maybe over the weekend or next week, speaking with Ms. Johnson about some type of buffer. And we, and we have no after problem after talking to any of our neighbors, but they choose not to talk to us. So, so you know, that's their that's their decision. Okay. We're 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 not this meeting will not end. We're gonna carry this meeting until June twenty-third ish. And then that'll provide you opportunity. We make it for why to give them the two months or do we do you, do you think you need we can accommodate you in June? If July is, if you think you need 60 days to um, button up with your engineering professional, we're just a very busy board and we're trying to do you know, what's turn our date? June 20th, there's a Sunday. No, then I guess it'll be the Thursday after that. Uh, Virginia, do you have the calendar? I do. June 27th. June 27th. We're not here. And then the next meeting would be July 25th. So it's June 27th or July 25th. We're, we're, we're away. Really, like really away that okay. way. So let, let, let's let's put it in July. What? What what the date in July? 25th. He, he's away. Aren't you? Oh no, no. You don't go. Oh. But if, if one of you are available, that's yeah. Okay. I can, I'm kind of yeah. and, as long as you have to, and yeah. please use our professionals for, for guidance. Tom and Tom will absolutely provide you direction. They will receive minutes from this evening's session, knowing what next steps we need to take. Again, we're here to help through an uncomfortable situation. This is a forgiveness application. I think we've made a fair amount of headway today. You know, we're not across the finish line yet, but. I appreciate your honesty this evening and that we've we've taken the next step. You know, we, we've sat in Tom Bachra's office before. Connie's been great through this whole process. Yeah, so yeah. We're, uh, we just want to just get it done. Okay, so we're going to carry this to July 25th. 25th. No further notice is required. If you want to touch base with your neighbor in the interim, you're welcome to do so. We look forward to addressing some of our laundry list items that we've provided. We appreciate you coming up this evening. Thank Thank you. You. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. With that said, can I make a motion to open up the meeting to members of the public for general questions or comments? Mr. Perita. Make a motion to open the members of the public. Second by Ms. West. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. The meeting is now open to members of the public to have a question or comment general for the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Hearing no one, may I have a motion to close the meeting to members of the public, Mr. Coviola. I'll make a motion to close to members of the public. Second by Mr. Deegan. I second that motion. Um, the meeting is now open for general comments. Do we have any comments? We did that. 
No, for, for the board, board member. I have a good question. Sure, absolutely. Um, for the stormwater management, yes. this might be a little selfish for my own back. That's okay. No, please. No um, question is a very good question. I know we have um, an easement in our backyard. Um, has the zoning board managed those easements and the stormwater management pieces? Okay. It depends on what, what type of easement. Is it a sanitary easement or is it a sewer easement. It, I think it's a sewer Okay, easement. it's a sewer easement, so yeah. it's an underground pipe mm -hmm. where product moves along towards the uh, north side of town. Um, what do you mean by you, management? Like, I'm just yeah. curious, like, when they were just thinking about, I'm like, we haven't done anything to our backyard yet. But you're, you're not responsible for it because it's a public hard. system. Yeah, no, yeah. I, but I'm just thinking, like, it might be some limitations to what I could do to my backyard. Yeah. Because um, you, 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 you cannot build a structure on it, but you can, act, let's say it's across your backyard and you mm -hmm. want to put a shed back there. Mm -hmm. There is something that, as a matter of fact, I created it and had the uh, and the uh, attorney is signed off on it. It's called the Holt Harmless Area. You can plunk something on top. You can't dig in the ground, but if it's if it's yeah. a shed or if it's a fence or if it's some uh, temporary structure, you can place something there. The Holt Harmless Agreement basically says it's all yours in the event that there's a collapse. The West family is on. But I'm thinking, like, what if we want to get a pool one day? Like all yeah. the things like yeah. the you, you can't dig into that easement. I think the easement's on this. It's, it's not in our so, backyard. It's the back so okay. I have an easement in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it runs perpendicular to my house. Mm -hmm. So when I put through my pool, I was limited where I could position my pool and how clear of a pool I could have because I can't encroach on that easement. Right. Encroach on that easement. So that easement dictated. Where I put my pool and how big my pool is. It should be on your survey, though, if you have a survey. Yeah, it should be definitely yeah. a public easement will be on Yeah, or if you have a title oh, binder, if you want the yeah. house, it should be in there. Too. That's right. That's if you have a title binder, it should be in there. And I'm pretty certain you do, because that's how I remember going to it at closing. And yeah, it it's a super out. long document. Put the inflatable one that you have to pull up. Any other, any other questions or comments before we part? I, I just I have a con I just wanted to thank everyone. It's been a, a great ride here. This application was my one thousandth oh. application. <laughs> I was curious to see no, I was curious to see where where it was, but uh, between Fanwood Plainfield and Berkeley Heights, this is the application of the Wow. I'm just going to say, yeah, I, 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 I have nothing track. to do but keep track of <laughs> well, Derek Peters' uh, home runs. Really? And, uh, you keep talking on the wall for African. Derek Peters' wife's birthday. Yeah. But you got a thousand applications. Yeah. 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 Wealth or useless information. <laughs> With that said, may I have a motion to close, Mr. Deegan? Motion to close. May I have a close uh, motion by Mr. Farida. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great Memorial Day. We'll see everyone in June. Thank you very much. Oh, keep your paperwork for the Jobowski application. Yeah, I have mine. How many after I put it all back? Well, I know it's because I'm going to leave. I think I have behind you. Uh, oh, I think it is one written yeah. this one piece about the uh, environment. The information wasn't here to celebrate your uh, 1,000 thing anyway. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. 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 It's the same application.